topic is SRTF that is shortest remaining time first CPU scheduling algorithm or you can say it is SJF with preemption. So we have already discussed that non preemption case in the previous video and uh, in this video I am going to discuss with you the SJF with preemption. So how does SRTF is different from SJF or you can say SJF with preemption is different from SJF with non preemption case. See in SJF basically we pick the job from the ready queue which is having the smallest burst time. We allocate the CPU to that process and in non preemption that process will continue its execution till its termination. You cannot uh, forcefully remove uh, that process from CPU in between uh, the execution of that process. But in case of preemption you can remove that process while it is executing before the termination of that process. And what is that condition when you will remove that process from CPU? Okay, that condition is if the newly arrived process is having shorter burst time than the remaining burst time of the currently running process, then you will remove the currently running process and allocate the CPU to the newly arrived process, and the currently running process will wait in the ready queue. So. Say, see here you can say whenever a new process arrive there may be preemption of the currently running process. You cannot say that there will be preemption of the currently running process. See that is not true. It is not true that always whenever a new process arrives the currently running process will be preempted. No that is not true. May or may not be. So when it would be preempted if the newly arrived process has shorter burst time then the remaining burst time of the currently running process then only preemption will be there otherwise the currently running process will continue its execution if the newly arrived process have larger burst time than the remaining burst time of the currently running process fine you will get it better with the help of example so i am going to take the same example we have discussed this example with sjf with non preemption now we'll discuss this case with preemption okay now first of all draw the gain chart this would be started from 0 fine now check out at 0 is there any uh, any process which is in ready queue check out the arrival time of the process yes at 0 one process has been arrived that is p4 now in ready queue we have one process only one process that is p4 now see if one process is there then you have you do not have any other choice you have to schedule this process only you have to give CPU to this process although the burst time of this one is 6 and you can say that I mean uh, you can say that in shortest job first we, we pick the job having the shortest burst time and the shortest burst time is 1 and 1 then why we are picking this process why so because these processes are not in ready queue now they haven't arrived till now only one process we have that is P4 so only one process you have you have only one choice you have to schedule p4 fine it is not like that p4 will continue its execution till 6 till its termination that is the case in sjf with non preemption but here in preemption what you will do you will check out after every unit of time see from 0 to 1 now at 1 you check out has any other process arrived at 1 we have p4 that is currently running now fine and after one see the p4 has been executed from 0 to 1 that is one unit of time now remaining time for p4 is 5 6 minus 1 that is 5 now check out at 1 is there has any other process arrived at 1 yes one process that is p2 now we have p2 also now available processes are p2 and p4 is currently running now check out newly arrived process is p2 now check out the burst time of p2 that is 5 and the remaining time of p4 is 5 which one is smaller both are same if both are same there is a tie then to break the tie uh, we would use first come first serve so firstly p4 has come after that p2 comes so we will continue with p4 on ok we will not do the context switching Again after one unit of time at 2 we would check has any other process arrived at 2. Now at time 2 P1 has arrived and P5 has been arrived. 
now as well as you have to update this time this remaining time also now p4 has been executed one more unit of time so remaining time is now 4 5 minus 1 that is 4 now out of the available resources uh, sorry out of the available processes find out which one is having the shortest burst time see we don't have this p3 because it will come at time 4 so out of 1 5 updated is 4 and 3 which one is which one is the shortest that is we have 1 so we'll allocate cpu to p1 for one unit of time only and this will require only one unit of time so this has been terminated now this has been done okay now check out at 3 has any uh, has any other process arrived at 3 no because it will arrive at 4 only okay now p1 p1 has been completed so remaining is p2 p4 and p5 p2 p4 and p5 so out of these three check out which one is minimum 5 4 and 3 3 is minimum so we'll pick this process p5 for one unit of time only 3 2 4 we'll check okay and now 4 you will check has any other process arrived at 4 yes p3 has been arrived and as well as you will update the time the remaining burst time of the currently running process so after one unit of execution remaining time is 3 minus 1 that is 2 now we have p4 p2 p5 and p3 now out of these four see this has been done out of 5 1 4 and 2 which one is having minimum burst time that is this one p3 this one is p3 and for one unit of time and it will require only one unit to complete its execution so p3 has been done p3 has been done now remaining is only three process now you have reached a point where all the processes see we have only five processes and all the processes has been arrived in ready queue now this algorithm will act as simple sjf algorithm okay you will not again and again check for in, uh, after one unit of time and then uh, is there any other process arrived or not now after every process has been arrived in the ready queue from that point of time this srtf will work as sjf only fine usme kya karte the you will pick from all the available uh, waiting processes you will pick the process which is having the shortest remaining time first you will allocate that process you will you will allocate the cpu to that process and continue that process will continue its execution till its termination okay now see now at 5 we are done with this p3 now remaining is p2 p4 and p5 out of these three which one is having uh, shortest burst time this one is having that is 2 so this would be allocated to p5 for two unit of time no need to check for uh, see uh, no need to check for the 5 to 6 and then 6 to 7 you can check if you want but if all the processes has been arrived in the ready queue after that just follow the same process as as in sjf with non preemption case so it would require two unit of time so 5 plus 2 is 7 now this one is also done p5 remaining is now p4 and p2 p4 and p2 5 and 4 which one is minimum that is p4 p4 having 4 unit of time 7 plus 4 is 11 and last one is p2 5 unit of time that is 16 see why we haven't checked here after each unit of time like this only we have checked here after each unit of time see here the main funda is if newly arrived process is having shorter burst time then the remaining time of the currently running process then only preemption would be done but once all the processes has been arrived then there is no chance that any new process will arrive so no need to check after each uh, after uh, every unit of time see any other process arrived or not any other process arrived, arrived or not because you know all the processes has been arrived so no need to check after the arrival of all the processes we will check for each unit of time till all the processes arrives in the ready queue okay now see here also uh, at last we have 16 and this would be 
same as the total burst time 5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 6 plus 3 that is 16 only and uh, in previous case also we have got here 16 so this would be same the change would be only in the location of these processes the order of allocation of these processes now we will find out the completion time check out at what time p1 has been completed p1 has been completed see here we have p1 after that we don't have p1 so completion time of p1 is this 3 at 3 p1 has been completed fine so you will not take this one because this is the starting time of p1 at 2 cpu has been allocated to p1 and this is the finishing time of p1 okay to the right of this p1 for p2 p2 it's 16 for p3 check out where is p3 here is p3 after that we don't have p3 so completion time is 5 for p4 see now you cannot say here we have p4 so, so you can write here too no this is not the completion time of p2 why so because after waiting of some unit of time cpu was allocated to p4 again fine so this is the waiting time so here you can say you cannot say this is the completion time check out here and after that there is no p4 so this is the completion time of p4 that is 11 okay now for p5 check out this is p5 yes now p5 here we have p5 from 3 to 4 so do not write 4 this is the completion time because here also we have p5 again cpu was allocated to p5 here after that no p5 so 7 would be the completion time of p5 now what is turnaround time turnaround time would be what completion time minus arrival time completion time 3 arrival time 2 1 16 minus 1 15 5 minus 4 1 11 minus 0 11 7 minus 2 that is 5 next is waiting time would be turnaround time minus burst time 1 minus 1 i hope you know the formula 5 minus uh, 15 minus 10 is uh, sorry 10 15 minus 5 is 10 1 minus 1 is 0 11 minus see 11 minus 6 will take the original burst time not the updated one 11 minus 6 is 5 5 minus 3 is 2 now find out the response time the time at which cpu was first allotted to that process after the arrival of the process for p1 when the cpu was allocated first time to p1 here at time 2 and arrival of the p2 is also 2 so response time is see as when as when the process come then only uh, p cpu was allocated to that process so p1 didn't wait not for a single unit of time 2 minus 2 that is 0 response time aate hi usko cpu mil gaya aate hi usko response mil gaya from the cpu now about, what about p2 here we have p2 first time cpu was allocated at time 11 check out the arrival time of this one that is 1 11 minus 1 that is 10 so p2 after arrival p2 has to wait for 10 unit of time okay and after 10 unit of time cpu was allocated to p2 for the first time p3 p3 the, here is p3 that is 4 and arrival time is 4 4 minus 4 0 for p4 see first time cpu was allocated at 0 we will not take this 7 because this is the second time cpu was allocated to p4 first time you have to check first time at 0 cpu was allocated to p4 arrival time is also 0 0 minus 0 0 p5 first time at 3 cpu was allocated 3 minus arrival time is 2 3 minus 2 that is 1 so here we cannot say that waiting time and response time would be same in the case of non preemptive algorithm response time and waiting time would always be same but in case of preemptive algorithm this would not be same here you can see the difference here is 5 here we have 0 here we have 2 here we have 1 now you can find out the average waiting time of this algorithm so the average waiting time for this algorithm would be 3.4 and this srtf would give you the minimal average waiting time now what this minimal means for this numerical on this numerical you apply any algorithm 
maybe you 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 devise you develop your new algorithm after some modification and you apply that algorithm on this numerical but you will never get the average waiting time less than 3.4 so this that is why it is known as the optimal solution this will give you the minimal average waiting time so one more example i'll discuss on this srtf only uh, till then take care bye bye